Sometimes it seems like sprinters get all the glory, but only do half the work. If you're an endurance swimmer, you know what I mean. Sprinters are always hanging out on the wall, chit-chatting, joking with the coach, and when they do swim, you better believe they will complain about swimming anything longer than a 25. It's a bit ridiculous. And yet, swimmers swagger around the pool deck like they own the place. But that's not the full story. Let's be fair. Are sprinters actually lazy? Or do they just approach their training with a totally different mindset? Today, we're going to dive into what it means to be a sprint swimmer and how sprint training differs from distance training. Let me know down below in the comments if you're a sprinter or a distance swimmer and be nice to each other. Let's start with the basics. Why do swimmers swim so much less than the distance crew? It's pretty simple actually. Sprint races are way shorter than distance races. And at a basic level, you don't need to swim a lot of distance to be good at sprinting. If we're talking about elite swimmers, most of them can sprint a 50 or get through a 1000 meter freestyle without dying. But to do each of these races well, you need specialized training. And that often means at some point in their careers, swimmers will end up choosing either distance or sprint as their focus. It's just too hard to be good at everything. Although Michael Phelps would beg to differ, but then again, he's a unicorn, the greatest of all time, and you're not him. The pacing required for distance and sprint races is vastly different, and it can be tough to incorporate enough training in both disciplines to be good at all of the different events. Sprinters need to focus a lot of their time on training fast twitch muscle fibers and pushing their anaerobic capacity. And while those things are important for distance swimmers, they're just not quite as essential. It's a common misconception that sprinters get to swim just 1,000 meters and go home. And that's just not true. During taper that might be true, but at an elite level, sprinters still swim up to 10,000 meters or more per day across multiple workouts during peak training. And while distance swimmers may swim more distance than sprinters, they aren't necessarily swimming slowly. It's the structure of training that sets sprinters and distance swimmers apart. Some people do go for shorter sprint workouts though, in a training approach that's known as ultra short race pace training. In USRPT, you only swim at race pace. No other extra fluff in the workout. US Olympic medalist Michael Andrew is famous of this USRPT training and that worked well to get him to the podium in Tokyo. If you wanna learn more about USRPT, I did an entire video on that, so check it out after watching this one. So now that we've gotten a general idea of the difference between sprint and distance training, let's dig into it. There are four key factors that influence how a swimmer's training is structured. The volume, density, intensity, and rest. Starting with volume and density, you've probably heard those words in your math or science classes, but how the heck does that apply to swimming? Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you do math. Volume and density are just helpful tools to look at the structure of your overall training. Volume is the amount of distance that you swim in a workout. Density is the amount of distance you swim in a given amount of time. For example, swimming 5,000 meters in one hour is more dense than swimming 3,000 meters in one hour. Distance workouts are often higher in volume and more dense than sprint workouts, but that doesn't mean sprinters' workouts are easier. Depending on the type of workout they're doing, sprinters may do a good amount of all-out sprint pace training, which requires way more rest than reps. And that results in the workout being less dense. Here's an example. The distance squad is doing four 400s on the five minute at an aerobic pace. That adds up to 1,600 meters of training. The sprint crew, on the other hand, is doing 1050s on the two minute best average from the diving blocks. That adds up to 500 meters. Each group's workout takes the same amount of time. 20 minutes, but the distance crew is doing more volume and density, more than three times as much. Does that mean that their workout was better or harder than the sprinters? Nope, each set just has a different goal. Intensity also plays an important role here. Sprinters will generally swim at a higher intensity than distance swimmers. They're giving it their all and they're trying to go as fast as possible, but that's not always true. Distance swimmers also train at a very high intensity. During tough race pace sets, distance swimmers will also push their limits to hold their maximum pace for their best event. But that pace will not be the same as a sprinter's maximum pace. I mean, think about it. You probably can't hold your 50 freestyle race pace for a whole 1,000 either. And if you could, there might be a spot for you on the Olympic podium. No promises though. And with that high intensity, sprinters may sometimes get more rest on certain sets. 
If all out efforts is the goal of a sprint set, you might get one or two minutes more rest between each repetition to make sure your body can fully recover before the next swim. Especially during peak training, many distance swimmers look over to the sprint side of the pool longingly. They wish that they could get a taste of that sprint life. Hanging out on the wall, racing each other, what could be better? But trust me distance peeps, you'll eat your words the second you get roped into a sprint set. And I think you secretly know that too. So it may have been obvious that sprinters and distance swimmers train differently, but did you know that their technique can also be completely different? Let's compare. To start, let's look at stroke technique. In the 50 freestyle, you'll see a lot of swimmers doing a straight arm recovery. Instead of the common high elbow recovery that most of us are taught, the straight arm is actually faster and allows a swimmer to spin their arms more quickly to maintain a higher stroke tempo and swim with more power. They're also gonna kick as hard as they can, sending huge showers of white water behind them. Many sprinters have a six beat kick, which means that they take three kicks per arm stroke. Sprinters will probably not breathe that much in the 50 free, if at all, because it will slow you down. Distance swimmers, on the other hand, will probably not go for the straight arm recovery, and I don't think they should either. Instead, they'll opt for a galloping stroke. This is advantageous because it helps develop a rhythm that the swimmer can maintain throughout the race and help them stay on pace. Distance swimmers will most likely stick to a consistent breathing pattern that helps them maintain that galloping and rhythmic stroke over time. They may also have less intense of a kicking pattern and that's usually a two beat kick, which means one kick for every arm stroke. It may seem like some distance swimmers barely kick at all. And it's true, the two beat kick is really just what's needed to keep the swimmer's body rotation and keep their hips in the right position. But keep an eye out, you'll see some more white water in the last 50 or 100 of a distance race when the swimmers are trying to kick it into gear and finish the race. Now let's move on to more general training approaches. Sprinters often spend a lot of time refining small aspects of their race. They'll spend hours and hours perfecting their starts, turns, and underwaters. In a race as short as the 50 freestyle, every hundredth of a second counts, so everything needs to be as perfect as possible. In shorter races, you'll notice swimmers try to spend as much time underwater as they can. Streamline is the fastest position in swimming. It's the fifth stroke, so sprinters will try and maximize this time to shave off anything they can in the race. They may also spend more time using equipment like parachutes, buckets or bands to challenge their power and build resistance in the water. By contrast, distance swimmers will focus more on maintaining a consistent pace and being able to switch gears to power through to the end of a race. Starts, turns, and underwaters matter, but they aren't as big of a focus for the longer races. Distance swimmers will probably not use as much special equipment, but it will make its way into their workouts on occasion. So that's all well and good, but let's see an example. Let's take a look at two of the world's best swimmers side by side. We're gonna look at Katie Ledecky and Florent Manadou. Flo Manadou is one of the world's best sprinters. And of course, Katie Ledecky is the distance queen, the most talented distance swimmer of all time. Let's start by looking at their arm recovery. As you can see, Flo is a picture perfect example of a straight arm recovery technique. You can even see his arm straight above and below the water, and you can see that incredible stroke tempo as well. Katie Ledecky shows us a great example of a galloping stroke. She's a pro at maintaining her pace for over 10 minutes. You can see how she breathes every two strokes and that helps her keep her rhythm. And now when you look at their kick, Flo's kick is an absolute motorboat. He's like a jet ski hovering over the water. He's going as fast as he possibly can while Katie is doing a two beat kick for a majority of the race and it looks like she's not even trying at all. But don't let that fool you, she's definitely putting in the work. Now these two swimmers are the best in the world at their craft so of course their technique is going to be on point. Your stroke technique probably probably falls somewhere in between these two, and that's totally fine. Ultimately, it's impossible to say whether sprinters are better athletes than distance swimmers or vice versa. This is a debate that will never end, and you can let me know what you think down below in the comments. On the one hand, many sprinters feel that they aren't taken seriously because they don't swim enough volume and their races aren't as respected because they're so short. On the flip side, distance swimmers might feel that their chosen discipline is thankless. Most crowds love to watch sprinters power through the finish of the wall and see all that white water, but distance swimmers are often neglected and they feel like they're not as exciting. 
Both disciplines require a ton of mental toughness, dedication, and commitment to the craft. So what do you think is better, distance or sprint swimming? Is that even the question? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, you're gonna absolutely love this one titled, How to Break One Minute in the 100 Freestyle. And if you wanna swim faster with a personalized swim plan, you gotta download the My Swim Pro app for iPhone and Android. Both sprinters and distance swimmers are welcome. Thanks for watching and happy swimming.